You want to know what's really funny is I almost just said GoPro start recording, but we're not using a GoPro. We are going to open up the old tackle bag. And talk about my favorite crankbaits for smallmouth bass so far. Now, what do I mean so far? You'll notice that I haven't uploaded in like a week. And that's because I've been working, fishing, uh, been on a couple fishing trips. And I've actually caught a good amount of smallmouth bass. Now, what I'm going to do, because I know you guys like the honesty and the tackle videos, is I'm going to tell you the baits that I've caught the most smallmouth bass on. And trust me when I tell you that there are a lot of smallmouth bass fishing videos. I did want to finish the year off with smallmouth bass videos. And I wanted to catch a lot of those smallmouth bass on crankbaits, plastics, and jigs. So far, that's going really well. And I appreciate your guys' patience. You know, just hang in there a little bit. There's going to be a lot of videos coming out in November. I'm probably going to hold off for October. I mean, you'll have this video, maybe one or two more. But that'll be it. And also, for those of you that say you like the close-up filming you know, with the camera or the baits. I'm not going to do that in this video. This will be the last video where I just talk about the tackle, the line, the reels, maybe some modifications and all that. And then after that, I will go back to the filming with the tackle. But today's video is supposed to be super basic and just inform you, like I said already 10 times, what I've had luck with for smallmouth bass. Move this out of the way. First up, I'm going to go over what has been my most productive color so far. And you guys know the that I often talk about the Rapala DT6 in the blaze color. Believe it or not, that has not been my most productive color for a DT6 for the smallmouth. It has actually been, believe it or not, chartreuse brown, and it's been this exact crankbait. You know, Rapala is an original brand, it's classic. They make great baits. I mean, some of the downsides to the baits is that you will get hooks that sometimes bend out. Uh, once in a while they do rust. I mean, I don't really change the hooks out. I just kind of throw it and fish it. The build does break sometimes, but I mean, overall, this is a really good bait. This bait right here has caught actually a lot of two pound smallmouth, one three pounder. Um, but yeah, this chartreuse brown, like I said, this has been very good. And I mean, what else here? Uh, on that, I like to use a six gear ratio reel, like a six, two to one. Usually around 25 to 26 inches per turn. Because, you know, with the torque and everything with a crankbait, that will handle it really well. I do throw it on a medium power fast action rod or a medium power extra fast action rod. Something like a G. Loomis IMX or a medium power Corrado. Anywhere from like low end to mid grade to high end, I've thrown with that. And for all of my crankbaiting, I do use Sunline fluorocarbon. This right here is 14 pound test. But I have been using 16 pound tests. I just didn't have an extra box, so this is why the 14. And then another one I do use is monofilament. This is Sunline Supernatural. And if you guys are wondering, no, I'm not sponsored by Sunline or any of these companies. These are all baits that you can go through in the videos and you will see that I use and a whole bunch of stuff coming up. But not to get sidetracked, the monofilament. Most of the time, like I said, I use the fluorocarbon. But if I do not want the bait to go as deep or I want a little bit extra stretch for maybe a better hookup, I will use monofilament. Fluorocarbon and monofilament. I just went off on a total tangent. Why do I not use braid for a crankbait? That is because for, let's see, something that hasn't been that effective this fall has been the KUD 1.5 Scoreville crankbait. My buddy actually caught a fish on this, but I did not. I do not use braid because braid has no stretch, okay? Like, it's no stretch, low memory. I want a little bit of stretch or limited stretch with a crankbait. I don't want no stretch because sometimes you need the stretch for that hookup. Anyway... The next bait that has caught me the most fish, the Strike King Red Eye Shad. You will see you do have this craw color. It's all torn up. It's been bit to pieces. You have this color, and then you also have another good one is the, the Rayburn Red. And another one, believe it or not, is the Chartreuse Belly Craw. Also the Orange Belly Craw, which I do not have in the box. Now, let's kind of jump around here and look. You will see that you have this red eye shad right here. Listen, listen to it. Okay. And then you have this red eye shad. Listen to it. You have the regular striking red eye shad, and then you have the striking red eye shad with the tungsten two tap system. Different sounds regular red eye shad, tungsten two tap. 
Sometimes I have found, now this depends on the year. Sometimes the smallies want the two tap, but I found that more often they want the regular red eye shad. I feel like just that loud noise is what they want. I mean, this is a great moving bait. This is a great lipless crankbait. So is that one. But all over the place so far, you have the DT6, uh, the DT6 colors. You have the red eye shad. And now, why do I not have it in the box? Now we're going to go to, what do you call it? We're going to go to a 5XD that I don't have in the box. That right there is the, I believe it's called the Sexy Blueback Herring Color. Now this is a striking 5XD. Uh, it does go, it says 15 feet, but it will go deeper than 15 feet, depending on the line that you use, that you use and the diameter per breaking strength. That took me a second because I used to talk about that all the time. But anyway, deeper water crankbaiting. This right here is my most successful color in the 5XD. Now, I did throw this at some of the places I've been going, and I actually haven't had any luck with it yet, but I'm not going to give up on it because a 5XD is a bass fishing machine. You guys already know that. And that will also be fished on fluorocarbon and monofilament. Now, on to, like I said, the KVD 1.5 Scorbill crane bait, and this is the Rayburn Red color. This is also another good color that I like to use, and if you look on the bottom, you see how it's kind of orange, red. It's got the speckles on the side. Great, great bait. So, get that out of there. Now, these crankbaits, these squirrel crankbaits, these six-foot crankbaits, lipless crankbaits, I already said jerk jerkbaits, even though I don't consider that a crankbait. Anyway, these moving baits, these are very good for smallmouth bass. I do tend to have better luck with these when you have chop on the water and when the water is dark or murky. Now, you'll see in the videos coming up that, like, at the start, I did catch a lot of fish with these, but then as time went on, I did go to plastics and jigs, and that is because, you know, there's a time to switch to that, there's a time to fish these, you guys already know that, I don't have to tell you that. So, in conclusion, this is a very basic video, I mean, these are the baits that I use, like I said, you do have Rapala, Strike King, there's a Mega Bass, uh, Spro, right down here, you know, there's other brands, there's other baits that work, other price points, but I mean, let's be honest. For five and six dollars from a Walmart or a Bass Pro Shops or a Field and Stream, these are all great choices. Um, I'm gonna have these baits that I listed that I really liked in the description with a price, and I'm also gonna have my favorite color. You're gonna have to excuse me too if I sound different. It's because I'm getting sick. I've been very busy. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what are your favorite crankbaits for smallmouth bass. And like I said, I appreciate. And like I said. I appreciate your patience. There's going to be a lot of videos coming in November. And also a big shout out to Matt Goes Fishing and Tokes Outdoors. Both of these guys. If you guys like my channel, do me a favor and subscribe to both of those guys. Very down to earth guys. They love fishing. They're good at fishing. Just all around cool. But anyway, enough of that. Enough of the rambling. I'll talk to you guys in the comments. Right there. Does not want to come in, does not want to come in, does not want to come in. That is a decent first fish of the day. That is a fat first fish of the day. get you unhooked oh yeah that's a good fish that's a you can't tell but I bet you that's a two-pound bass okay scales turning on you have zero pounds zero ounces you have up oh, one pound 12 ounces not quite two pounds 
I honestly thought it was a two pounder, but still gorgeous fish. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. 